Now, we all know that Monet is a bit of an adorable harpy of culture at heart. I mean, she engages in all of the activities of high society, including reading, writing, and subscribing to the Grand Line Review for regular One Piece content uploaded straight to her YouTube feed. Don't, uh, don't ask her about that last one though, because she tends to get just a little bit embarrassed. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today for the Delver Encyclopedia, we are headed deep within the realm of the cold with the snow time fun of the Yuki Yuki no Mi. The Yuki Yuki no Mi is a Logia type fruit that allows its user to conjure, manipulate, and become snow, thus turning them into something of a winter wonderland or a dodgy winter carnival with a scary clown depending upon the user, who in this case would be Monet, a trusted agent, a former warlord of the sea, Don Quixote del Flamingo, and this fruit would make its debut in the series during the Punk Hazard arc. For the whole naming business this time around, we are opening up our Japanese 101 textbooks to page one, where we discover that the word Yuki means snow, which even if you haven't studied Japanese, I'm sure you've watched enough anime or read enough manga to pick up on that by now. And as such, the English translation is about as perfect as it can be, with Viz electing to call it the Snow Snow Fruit. So of all of the Logia fruits we've discussed in this encyclopedia, I find snow to be a particularly intriguing element to take command of, and that's because of its potential versatility. So to illustrate, a fruit that can be compared to the Yuki Yuki no Mi would obviously be the Hia Hia no Mi held by Kuzan, and canonically, the Hia Hia no Mi is considered the direct superior of the Yuki Yuki no Mi. However, in the case of ice, Kuzan is only ever able to wield it with one form of consistency. It's hard or nothing. Meanwhile, a user of the Yuki Yuki no Mi has an incredible array of options regarding the toughness of an ability that they wish to invoke with snow. And that could be anything from a light flurry that anyone or anything could walk through to an impenetrable snow wall. And in that way, I'd actually liken this fruit much more to the Sunasuna no Mi wielded by Crocodile, as they both make grand use of a teeny tiny substance being grains of sand and snowflakes respectively. And you can see a lot of similarities between these two fruits in the series, particularly within their abilities to shape the environment with blizzard and or sandstorm style escapades. But Crocodile can also form varying degrees of sand structures, some of which can effectively act as a shield against most regular attacks, whilst others might be highly vulnerable manipulations of sand. So for example, think of a more thin gathering designed to mimic some sort of blade. And speaking of, they do also have a bit of a blade aspect going on as well, as in the series, Monet has displayed an intriguing ability to freeze the feathers of her wings to the point where they were capable of clashing directly with the swords of a certain green head straw hat blade boy. And I would assume that Crocodile is capable of doing much the same, as was briefly demonstrated actually during the non-canon film One Piece Stampede. But back to the Yuki Yuki no Mi, this aspect really should not be underestimated because post time Skip Zoro is no simp of an opponent. And the fact that this devil fruit without Haki seems to provide its user with the ability to clash with Mato grade blades is nothing short of phenomenal because logically, even if Monet's wings were frozen, then they should still quite easily be sliced through. However, when it comes to the world of magical fruits, logic is of course relatively meaningless. But to state one more similarity with the Sunasuna no Mi, they both make for some pretty great use in combat against water-based opponents. AKA most of the life in this world, with the Sunasuna no Mi capable of draining water, whilst the Yuki Yuki no Mi can obviously freeze it. So this fruit, despite its, well, I guess we'll say minimal use in the series, does have a crap ton of potential. And if it were in the hands of a more prominent antagonist, then I suspect we could see an arc of alabaster scale devastation. With that said, Monet is not to be understated here at all because she is a pretty phenomenal user of the Yuki Yuki no Mi and an invaluable asset to Doflamingo as a result. I mean, first up, I guess I should say that during her time on Punk Hazard, we were most certainly on her home turf, being a snowy wasteland and all. But interestingly enough, Monet rarely got to use that to her advantage and her invocations of the Yuki Yuki no Mi took place mainly within enclosed indoor settings. And I just point that out because her powers were pretty damn crazy, even without access to natural snow. And I mean, just thinking about what she could have done outside, well, I pity the person who has to face off against a Yuki Ona in the snow. In fact, on one of the rare occasions where this was demonstrated, Monet was shown capable of maximum outdoor stealth due to the fact that she could blend in with the snowstorms and thus pursue Trafalgar Law without him noticing at all. But does that really matter? Not really, because Monet's ability to generate the element means that she may as well have been outside, and it gives her a tremendous environmental advantage that would probably absolutely sink rookie opponents via basic factors, such as having to fight on the unstable ground of snow, or not having perfect control of their bodies due to a massive temperature drop. And for those who aren't affected by this, while Monet has demonstrated a pretty fantastic control of her own form at any given time, and very much held her own against Toshigi, who went all out with Armament Haki, which is generally the kryptonite of Loki users. In addition to this though, Monet has a great sense of the true capabilities regarding snow. And I think this is best demonstrated in the Kamakura Jusoshi technique, which in English is known as the 10 layer igloo. Now this is something of an ultimate containment maneuver to be used against those that Monet is unable to physically overpower. 
which is many individuals. But most notably, this was used against Luffy, and it resulted in quite probably one of my favorite exchanges in the series, where after becoming trapped, Luffy said, I can't imagine losing to the likes of you, and Monet just snapped back, yeah, well, I can't imagine actually beating you. And then she just proceeded to completely outplay Luffy by giving him something of a snow hug and attempting to freeze his body into unconsciousness. And I think that this moment is probably the largest advocation event for Monet's skills, because the fact that she can think creatively enough with her fruit to put Luffy in a much more dire position than most villains are capable of is something that should not be forgotten. But Monet is probably most memorable for what we'll call her final form, which is known as Mananuki, and translated as Perpetual Snow, which sees Monet transform entirely into snow and surround a person's body, attempting to perform an even more effective snow hug and immobilize them through the sheer power of cold. And of course, she can also form vicious snow fangs and can then rip her opponent's body to shreds with them, which is um, far less inviting than the snow hug. And one more thing I should mention when it comes to Monet is that she rather unfortunately is dead after a certain clown boy accidentally stabbed her in the heart. Well, I mean, not accidentally, he did do it on purpose, but he didn't know whose heart he was stabbing. Foolish clown. But this means as just as with the recent axolotl fruit we explored, the Yuki Yuki no Mi has also gone back into circulation within the world. However, unlike the axolotl fruit, we have no ideas regarding its whereabouts. There is one very popular fan theory that it may have reincarnated on a thousand sunny in Nami's tangerine grove, which would be fun, but at the same time, there was no shortage of food in Caesar's lab. So unless it was a particularly rare base form fruit, I think it makes more sense for the Yuki Yuki no Mi to still be present on Punk Hazard, awaiting whichever intrepid explorer who manages to stumble upon it first. Now, I'm sure that many of you are sick of hearing my belief on what awakened Logias do, which for the record is completely changing the climate of any given an area permanently, but we do have something relatively new to discuss in regards to this time around, because it's interesting to note that the excessive use of the Hia Hia no Mi is what resulted in Punk Hazard being draped in permanent snowfall, while the use of the Maku Maku no Mi resulted in a permanent fire escape. So at face value, it would seem that they both transformed their environment into that of their direct inferior element, which means that if my climate idea is the way to go, then awakening the Yuki Yuki no Mi would not actually result in creation of a perpetual snowland. If anything, I think it would have a far less and effect and end up being something like drastically reducing the average temperature of any given area, but not necessarily resulting in snowfall. So basically it would make things pretty chilly, which does admittedly seem a bit underwhelming, but there it is nonetheless. Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a snow human. One obvious point I haven't brought up before now is the pretty fantastic advantage that consuming this fruit essentially makes its user immune to cold weather, or perhaps not completely immune, but exceedingly resilient, making it more than ideal for those who live in any form of frosty climate. However, However, it does make me wonder if the opposite would also be true and thus make the user far more susceptible to hot weather. Like if we took Monet and sent her to Alabaster, would she feel like she was in some form of hell or maybe would her natural snowy powers provide her with some natural icy insulation and make extremely hot weather more bearable by being something of a self air conditioner? It would be one or the other, so it's very high risk, high reward there. And something I just want to note because many people do get this confused, Monet's wings are not conjured by snow. They are in fact actual wings. Although that's not to say that one could not use this fruit to create artificial snow wings and even use them to fly, as Monet proudly displays with the Mana Nuki technique. It's an interesting idea though, because not many Logia users can conjure flight in this manner. Most of them do manage a form of flight by propelling their element and pushing themselves forward rather than being able to form wings of their own. Although in theory, I don't see why users like Smoker would necessarily not be able to do this because they can generally control the viscosity of their element. So all one would really need to do is like make some super tough smoke and bam, there's some wings. Although admittedly, it would probably be a lot less effective than just using yourself as a glorified jet engine. Also, interestingly enough, Monet is also quite capable of producing what I would call a Marco style effect. And what I mean by that is due to the fact that Marco's blue flames aren't capable of causing damage. He primarily uses a combination of flight and intangibility as a blue phoenix to generate an overwhelming amount of force for him to strike with, usually in the form of a kick. And due to Monet's physical composition as a harpy style being, as well as the fact that she can access intangibility as a Logia user, she would thus be capable of mimicking this idea and lashing out with very powerful talent strikes, which is one of her primary methods of attack. It's obviously not quite as potent as Marco, not anywhere near as potent actually, but it is pretty fascinating to note because I don't think there is any other character in the series aside from these two who can take full advantage of this kind of attack style. But in the end of 
all of this, all I can really say is, yeah, this is a super solid devil fruit. I mean, firstly, it's Logia, which is always a great start, because even if they are easily countered at high levels of combat to the average individual, that alone is going to make it a magical, life-changing ability. But Snow itself is also just really cool. And I think it gives the user a ton of versatility and options for implementation. With an intelligent user like Monet, you can very easily close the gap between yourself and particularly powerful enemies. And in the best, more sinister hands possible, well, one could wreck snowy hell upon the world. There's really almost nothing I would consider a detrimental factor, except for the theoretical potential of making the user vulnerable to warmer climates, which living in Australia, I am always very concerned with because our summer is already untenable as a regular human, much less a snowman. But that is just such a nothing concern in comparison to all of the benefits granted by this fruit. So yeah, I would never go so far as to call this one of the best in the series, but it's a very solid middling choice, perhaps even bordering on a great choice to consume. And with that, we are going to commit the Yuki Yuki no Mi to the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia. Next time on the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, we have a specimen that sounds extraordinarily like the Yuki Yuki, only this time we'll be focusing on being able to generate the world's greatest arsenal of weapons with the Paramecia glory that is the Buki Buki no Mi. But what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.